Thank you. Okay, good afternoon. My name is Carol Pupart. I'm business development manager for Tech Data at uh, in Belgium, uh, responsible for the Delhi MC product portfolio. Um, today we will have a second of a series of six uh, webinars uh, on uh, different topics. Uh, you can see the schedule here. Uh, last week we had one on the recently announced uh, product, uh, storage product from uh, the, from Delhi MC, the power store. Uh, you can see the recording uh, if you click on the on, on, on the link. Uh, we will send you the presentation afterwards. Today we have a session on data protection, and as you can see, there are four other sessions coming uh, in the next weeks. Uh, we uh, the next one will be on power quote. Um, we uh, will go uh, early June a little bit more in detail on the Dell Partner Program and what it can bring you. Uh, in June 17, on June 17th, we have a special uh, presentation which will cover ready notes de designed or developed um, for artificial intelligence and high performance computing. Uh, so, ready notes are uh, best practices and metrics architectures uh, you can leverage on. And then the final one is also leveraging on uh, metrics and, and best practices uh, based on the X ray technology and specifically oriented to uh, remote working. So please uh, reach out to us if you do not have uh, those invitations, I assume you have them as you are subscribed for today's session. Uh, and please feel free to register if you haven't done this. I can only say that we do our utmost best to make this as attractive as possible. Um, the topic of today is data protection uh, 2020. Um, IT has changed a lot, um, so um, there are a lot of topics uh, which we have to take into consideration when we de de develop or design a data protection uh, or, uh, or um, solution. And therefore, I'm very happy to um, welcome Chris Millington uh, from Dell EMC. Um, he is uh, CTO for data protection, but I will give the word to uh, Chris later on. Just one more slide on some housekeeping. Um, yep, there we go. So you are all muted. Um, sorry for this. On the other hand, the chat box is open. Uh, so if you, during the session, you would like to ask a question, uh, do not hesitate to post this question on the chat box. We will try to make some pauses during the presentations where I will consolidate the questions and ask Chris to uh, uh, touch into those and, and give you some feedback. Um, on the other hand, uh, as Tech Data, uh, we have years of experience in data protection. Uh, we have quite some competences in house. So if you have, um, uh, if you have uh, questions in regards to data protection, uh, the content of the presentation we uh, give today, please do not uh, hesitate to get in touch with us. So we really want, um, we are not able to make this interactive with you. On the other hand, uh, we, wa we want you to uh, make it useful. And if you really think that there is a, a a need for more information or a detailed uh, collaboration between us and the EMC on a specific topic regarding data protection, uh, please let us know. Uh, you can send me an email and I will take it up. And then the bottom one, uh, also important, uh, we can also help you uh, with uh, live demos. Uh, we have some equipment from the EMC available at Big Data. And of course, we can also leverage from the virtual uh, capabilities that the EMC is offering. Well, that's it for me. Uh, I can give, I would like to give the uh, floor to Chris now to uh, 
start with the presentation. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I've just turned my video on, so you know, a face always helps when somebody's speaking, but I will turn it off during the presentation just so I can maintain a good bandwidth with everybody. Hope you're all safe and well. I'm here today from Dell EMC uh, to talk to you about data protection solutions. My colleague and uh, reasonably new starter, Marius, is here as well today. He's the partner account manager for your area. So I want to extend our gratitude for allowing us to be here today, but I also want you to understand that we are not just here today, we're here to help you in the future with anything to do with data protection. So please, at any time, reach out to me, to Marius, or indeed to Carl, if you have any queries regarding anything to do with Dell EMC and data protection solutions. I have the chat open, uh, the questions and answers, so I'm gonna monitor that at the same time. Now, I have a lot of material to go through today, okay? So I want to make sure that I can position ourselves correctly before we go into the details. And I'm also going to give you some opportunities that we are working on as a team with inside the data protection organization that you can go out and speak to your partners. The support of the whole region is here for you as well. So any questions, please fire them across. Pause after each section. If you want to obviously ask anything, you can do at any point in time. So without further ado, I'll move straight into it. First and foremost, what I would like to do is talk to you about creating the opportunity. Now, what I mean by the opportunity is, is that you hear a lot from Dell about a lot of products. Now, that's absolutely true. We have an end-to-end -end product portfolio, but one of the key areas where we can really, really add extra value is around our data protection offerings. And this is something that we've been doing for the best part of 30 years now. And you know, we have proven technologies that some of you may be familiar with, but what you probably don't understand is, is how we're moving forward. And this first section, I really want to show you how we're changing our conversations to customers and what that means to you from an opportunity point of view. And we call this our data first strategy. So, when I'm talking about data, what I'm actually doing here is, is I'm, I'm trying to move the traditional customer from a backup policy driven type of environment where they maybe traditionally use software, have probably had some disk, but predominantly maybe use tape as well. So, you know, that legacy type environment. And what we're trying to do is take them forward from a backup through data protection into what we will call data management going forward, which is a platform where we protect and give operation and business success based around how we have retention, how we can recover and all those types of things, whether it's on-premise, in the cloud, at the edge. We're not concerned where the data is, it's just a matter of concern about how we can recover and how we can obviously do that. And we'll do that in two ways. We'll do it for a software defined infrastructure and we'll do it for a multi-dimensional scale up and scale out hardware infrastructure. And these can be combined together for a hybrid approach or you know, a compliance approach where it needs to be on premise. We're flexible completely from end to end on this. So you know, think about it from a protection element. Our protection is going to be built around mission critical data availability. And how we go about that design and how we do this from a requirements point of view, we very much start with the workload. The conversation should always be about the workload because no two workloads are the same, no recoveries are the same, no performance requirements are the same, no access are the same. So we have to be able to start with the workload. And then we will talk about how we protect that workload, whether we're doing it from a, a point of view, do it from a scalability, whether we need to bring in cloud so it can be moved around on-premise, off-premise, all those types of things. And when we move into the cloud storage side of it, which is a strong area for us, we make sure we maintain the cost ability. And the cost ability is not just about this is how much it costs to send. It's about how we use infrastructure in the cloud, how we recover from the cloud, the performance in the cloud, how we can move from cloud to cloud, all those types of things. And we put these together as a hybrid type of solution approach. Ultimately for you guys, what this really means is, is we give you the end-to-end -end value so you can absolutely scale out the opportunity and more importantly, offer a unique capability with inside LNC with one vendor approach. So how does that work? Very simply, remember three things here. We can talk to any source, we can take from any target, 
and we can meet any service level uh, agreement or better still service level we will do that through those two defined factors, the software and the multi-dimensional scale-out capability. But what we will then put on top of that is, is these new business models that we're talking about, microservices that we're able to offer, where we can do things around consumption models, where we can do things around the way that people pay from a flexibility point of view, how we can scale inside a distributed file system, whatever it may be, we can have that end-to-end -end conversation with a customer and basically say through all of our joint technologies that we have with inside the, the portfolio, whether that's from you know, things like RSA, secure works, those types of things where we can do role-based access secure control, where we can actually create that in-house cloud platform that might be required in there. Or obviously the VMware interaction where we're first and best as well. So you know, we really have a compelling story, but today we're not gonna to focus too much on that growing out the story. I want to give you a focus of how this would work for you in a conversation. So we're talking about software defined. We are aware that we have a business that's changing. We have a, a responsibility to existing customers where they're using backup restore times to drive them forward into our dot next capabilities or into the dot next capabilities that the world is seeing, you know, a great example has been all of us working from home how flexible we've been able to be. Think about that from a protection strategy. success, it's a, you know, it's a big change for a lot of IT administrators out there. So we are 100% focused on that. And we understand that not only are we focused on that, we are able to actually define the way people move to that. And when I'm talking about move, I'm talking about not saying migration here. We're not saying, you know, restart, refresh, all those types of things. We have a legacy of good that will bring our customers from where they've been with us for whatever amount of years into the next 10 years. So what, what we call this in very simplistic terms is, is a terminology, and I think it's a great terminology that we call bridging the gap, okay? So I'm gonna spend around about 10 or 15 minutes around this bridging a real conversation for you. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have in-depth product knowledge. We can help you with that, of course. But this is about being able to understand the conversation. More importantly, I can put commercials to this as we go through it and show you the benefits. So what we have in data protection terms against all vendors, okay? All vendors are looking for two things, okay? And they, they round these two things together as the competitive really mean. It's about how the software or the licensing or the hardware or the licensing comes together with the data and how the data has been managed and growth and everything else from scale up, scale out, all those types of things. And this is the real area where we can add the value, where we can bring things together and show a real good cost management, cost growth prediction and cost guarantee. Now that word guarantee I'll use a couple of times today. And it's very simple how we look at this. And we look at this from a transformation point of view. And what I'm saying here is, is I'm not just talking about data protection transformation, I'm talking about And I call this the six R's, okay? So right now you can see four. So these are the, these are the requests, the requirements, and the, the kind of conversations that we're having across our portfolio about, you know, that transformation. How can we re-host? Do we need to lift and ship? Can I re-platform this? Should I look at containerization? What about rewrite? Can I actually adjust things, reuse things, repurpose things, or do I need to repurchase? And if I'm repurchasing, should I look at a software defined infrastructure? So those types of things are the opportunity generators around storage, about hyper-converged, all those types of things. When it comes to data protection, there's two main areas that we really want to talk to them about, and that's retain and retire. What should we retain and what can we retire? Now, the word retire could be an extreme opportunity that says, you know, I've got a thousand media sat in a remote storage. Do I really need those anymore? Can I do something different with them? Is it possible for me to get a better cost measurement by taking that remote storage away and thinking about a cloud long-term retention strategy. Absolutely. All of those things can be talked about, all those things can be managed, and all of those can be actually done by Dell EMC. So what we really want to do here is, is have this conversation. 
we're talking about that conversation, this is where we can bring in our other products with inside the home. When we talk about the workload and we talk about workload distribution, then it's very clear that we understand there is still traditional workload out there. There is certain things that you just can't virtualize or move into the cloud. Then we have the virtual workload. And then we have the infrastructure or the container or even the platform as a service offerings that are coming to the forefront of how people actually consume infrastructure these days. In very simple terms, I like to do it this way. I like to do it in a construct and consume or build and buy. And partners like to build because they think it adds value. But there again, customers like to buy so that they can pay for what they use. You know, upfront predictions, 30% X storage, all those types of things are taken out of consideration when we start thinking about how they just pay for what they use. But the interesting thing to bear in mind here, when we talk about construction consume, the real figures today are that 90% of the actual workload distribution is something that comes under construction. So the buying hardware, and a lot of the time the buying hardware on premise or in their remote sites, and the actual real consume from cloud is a lot less than people think. And yes, that is because of the, the cloud architecture or the cloud applications that have been born in the cloud. But as we fast forward to the end of, say, a maintenance contract, what we're really looking at is a massive shift there from that construct model into the cloud. And we see that goes down from 90 to 30 and then in the cloud, 70. So the virtualization conversation is moving more towards the cloud. And that's why you'll see with inside a lot of our hardware products, especially around our hyper-converged and converged infrastructures, that cloud out option. So our strategy and vision in all of our business units is to have a cloud out option with inside all products. So remember that part. But the good thing to, to recognize here is, is if we look at tradition in the construct, right? This is where we can start talking to partners' values around our attach, our tech refresh, and those programs that we're running now inside the channel. So they may well sell them a new uh, piece of hardware for a new uh, application, you know, Windows, Linux, AIX, whatever it may be. Then we have to consider how they're gonna protect that. And they may well need to buy more servers because the, the environment's expanding and they may well sell them servers on top of that. But ultimately then there'll be a repository that's required or a purpose-built appliance type scenario, which we can also provide. And that obviously allows them to be able to do that attach tech refresh and get all those benefits that we offer from our channel programs right now. But when we start talking about virtualization, where we're consolidating, where we're now doing proxy management rather than physical hardware and things like that, we still have this ability to turn around and say that, you know, our technologies are hybrid. They can go across both types of environments. We're not concerned how you transform them. What we are concerned about is how we protect the information before, during, and after that transformation. And as that scales out and they start looking at the consumer and how they're gonna do that, maybe VMware do this through a, a service now type offering, you know, using their uh, automation or uh, cloud direct or whatever it may be that they put on top of that, whether it's at VM level or containerized level. We are in a position where we can come forward and say, look, I just need you to make a decision. And that decision needs to be, does it be on premise? or off-premise. If it's off-premise, then we're a market lead in technology when it comes to cloud integration and what we can do. Because of our integration and first and best around VMware, we have absolute differentiation against our vendors here on what we can do when we talk about operation recovery and integration into things like forward or carbon black, whatever it may be around VMware that we can we also have this ability because we're a hardware manufacturer to be able to create this private offering with functionality that they can keep on premise and purchase the same way as they do without affecting the traditional partner go to market capex model where they will 100 percent want that type of payment up front we're able to help with that we're able to finance that so that they can be recognized on the upfront deal but the customer himself only pays for what he consumes and as and when more applications become cloud first, such as Salesforce. We're now able to talk about adding value to those without disturbing the way that people are purchasing. What do I mean by that? So, you know, we can actually talk about things about how they can sit on object store or how they can actually protect it in an object store. 
we can talk about how we can give them a true secure air gap vaulting scenario from that and we will ultimately fall back onto the one scenario that everybody always seems to pick on us about which they don't realize we've been through a transition ourselves with which is this modern management ui that we have a single vision of everything from the edge to the course of the cloud within one ui and inside that ui search capabilities analytical capabilities configuration role-based control business unit management people doing their own thing that can be centralized but not actually accessed. So you can now have the application owner controlling these growth, controlling these backup scenarios with a centralized vision through DPC, as you probably, some of you may know it, with inside the whole of the organization to give that data protection officer a clear view of what's going on from his compliance and governance legislation requirements. So this is a really, really strong message we have here. This is two things to take away from this. One is how we move and how we change and how we understand that. How the partner can attach a data protection conversation to other areas that he's selling them to his customers, such as storage, such as convergence, all those types of things coming together and ultimately the benefits that we offer Dell EMC here as a single vendor on top of that. So very simply, we have to productize, and I will go over products very lightly today, but if you want further information, I can come back in the future and do that. We want you to lead with the converged data protection solution approach, what we call the IDPA. Why? Because everybody's converging, everybody's transitioning, everybody's going through that. Software and hardware combined offers a higher value to a customer. It also gives a partner a better margin capability. As we move forward in new applications, as, as we see more containerization appearing, such as around Kubernetes, things like that, we want you to think about the hyperconverged PowerProtect X400 type of approach or the PowerProtect data management software, which I'll cover shortly. And for those traditional environments where we still have that breakup, where maybe we own the software, maybe we don't, we have that ability to talk about hardware and software options that turn around and say, we actually work with every type of application, with every type of backup software that's not ours, through our hardware platform. However, we also have advantages with some of our software capabilities, some of you might be familiar with Boost, for instance, where we can add value. So we have that full conversation from end-to-end -end capabilities. And where we're talking about futures, talking about our development and where we're going forward, these will be around this power protect data management. You'll hear the word power protect a lot from us or power right across our portfolio. This is Michael Dell's vision of bringing everything together and simplifying it so that we have the best products with inside the market for the customers. So our X400 hardware platform will be where we develop our predominant new applications. We will have a passage in there from our legacy infrastructures, whether that be IDPA, whether that be network, or Avamar, data domain, we will have a path towards that. We call that the path to power. And anything new that comes along, a good example of that is things like Office 365 or Microsoft Teams or M65, whichever one you want to call it these days, Salesforce, they will be looked at in a different way. We won't go out there and pursue the same way that every other vendor does. We may well look at ways of protecting them at a granular level with inside the container that they actually sit in. So please don't hold me to that. I'm just giving you an idea of what we are looking at and how we're going to do our dot next. And the great thing about this platform, it will be agile. We will be able to add functionality to it on the fly, no reboots, no downtime. We will be able to update that real time. So think of it a bit like old Windows 10, if you like, and how that it came from where it was and how they just were able to actually add functionality to it. That's exactly what we will do there. Some of them will be things like fixes, some of them will be new application support, and these will be opportunities to upsell when we have people that are moving into this Power Protect platform. So how are we going to do that? We're going to do a coexist strategy. 100% we're looking at ways of being able to move our customers into the new platform, to give them a higher value, to reduce the cost of protection, whether it's through technologies that reduce consumption in footprint, bandwidth, whatever it may be. We're also gonna give them the ability to be able to look at recovery point objectives, 
in a better way, not just in the virtualized world where everybody else seems to focus, but in the physical infrastructure database environment that can't be virtualized. We want to be able to offer people that operational success and recovery right across the edge to core into the cloud, the whole strategy to make sure that we're giving the best value we can, not just in protection, but in the actual ability to recover information. And, you know, this will take a period of time. There will be people that come forward and say, you don't cover this. You haven't got application support for that with inside that platform. Remember, we've got a legacy of good here that pretty much protects anything. The new platform is a development that we are moving forward. This is not importing existing code. This is rewriting code, rewriting a new platform, allowing us to be able to understand our existing platforms and moving forward into a management platform that allows access for a distributed file system to anybody that has access rights. So what does that mean to you? Well, let's have a look at the portfolio. Let's have a look at the complication. And I'll do this really, really quickly so we don't spend too much time here. We have updated our product portfolio. We want you to understand that our traditional products are not going away. They're still here and still sellable. But we've introduced this PowerProtect software suite or PowerProtect data manager and this PowerProtect hardware infrastructure. And some of the naming policies have changed slightly within our existing product portfolio. So we don't want you to go out there and just talk about data domain anymore. We want you to call it Power Protect DD. Why? A clear path from DD. You may well be aware we've upgraded the DD recently into Power more capabilities, more performance, but we have a clear path already from DD into Power Protect. So we're already part of the way there. And the protection suite, as you know, was a combination of bringing together. Avamar, Networker, RecoverPoint, uh, Source One, things like that, and rebranding that as Data Protection Suite. What you'll see as we move forward is a change of naming on that as well into the Power Protect portfolio. So, this is what our portfolio looks like today. We have the centralized management with the common knowledge of Data Protection Central. We may well change the name of that to Power Protection Central. I can't quote that one right now, but it's been discussed. We have on the left-hand side, the new technologies, the PowerProtect Data Manager, the PowerProtect X400, which comes in software-defined, hardware capabilities, hybrid or all flash, all the things that you'd expect to be in there, and now we're there we're inside our portfolio. And we are absolutely targeting specific workloads around this, adding more functionality around those workloads going forward in the future in the way that we can do things, how we can move, recover, all those types of things around the, uh, the actual applications. You can see VMware is a very big focus for us, as you probably would imagine. SQL, Oracle, physical Windows and Linux. That's where we are with that platform today. For everything else, we move across to the right hand side into the data protection suite. And we want you to think about the integration or the convergence of that of data domain coming together with our data protection suite, which is our IDPA offering. And that IDPA offering is absolutely designed to address today's requirements, predominantly that virtualization workload. But we have that extension back out into the physical environment. Quick look at the product lines. Obviously, you'll get a copy of these. We can pretty much start at a very, very a uh, small introduction, eight terabytes, and scale out into petabytes, right across all of our portfolio. The integrated, the data domain. The big thing about the data domain or the Power Protect DD is that we've really increased the capacity in a smaller footprint, and we've introduced a lot more performance. And of course, when we talk about the Power Protect DD, we are absolutely 100% focused on that enterprise customer with this. We are talking about guarantees around deduplication and guarantees around performance because of our streaming capabilities. So rest assured that we're not moving away from this product today. What we're doing is just we're making it better. But more importantly, we're thinking about dot next going forward. And as I mentioned, the existing portfolio looks like this. On the left hand side, you'll see us move from DP suite into the Power Protect software suite. You'll also also see the hardware combinations change where we traditionally had 
data domain as a purpose-built appliance or a virtual edition of that and the IDPA, we now have X400 and still we have the purpose-built appliance of the PowerProtect DD, which is the updated data domain and the IDPA, which we've adjusted slightly in functionality and capacities to be able to cope with that converged infrastructure. They will all have choices on consumption, the way that we can do things, and more importantly, we will 100% give storage guarantees, storage capabilities, loyalty programs out there with inside the DPS portfolio for the partners to maximize their potential needs. And don't forget, we've got this boost technology, which a lot of people obviously forget about. What we can do here is, is, is we can actually add value to other people's software by introducing Boost. So when we're selling things like the PowerProtect DD, we want to talk to them about how we can do application direct boost or direct boost to the actual backup software that's already in there to give them a reduction or a cost reduction on their storage footprint or their network that's required to move the data. So, you know, we've got a really strong conversation we can have here. So does that make sense? I'm going to stop there and ask for if there's any questions. There's nothing I can see open at the moment, but if anyone asks any questions, please post them. If not, I'll move on to the next uh, subject, which is our cyber protection option. Uh, just to clarify a little bit uh, to the audience, if you want to raise a question, you can use the question and answers box. I was referring to the chat box, but there is no chat box. So it's questions and answers. Okay, thank you. No problem, Cap. So the cyber, let's go into cyber, okay, right? Everybody's talking about cyber and so are we. Now, bear in mind that, you know, Dell EMC with the historic capabilities and, you know, being first and best in many areas as we've gone through our history, we wanted to come along when we were starting to talk about cyber, we wanted to come along and we wanted to have some differentiation. You know, we hear things about air gap, all those types of things, I'll go through them today, but. Let's understand one thing between all of us here. The opportunity is there staring us in the face for everybody. I know it's a hot topic. I know everybody else is talking about it, but this is something that all customers really need to address. So that's why the vendors are talking to you about this. So as I go through the cyber, you understand where the threats are coming from. When we understand where the threats are coming from, this is where we can actually go into that broader portfolio conversation. Remember that we're not just talking about the crime side of it or the malware side of it or the ransomware side of it. You've got malicious, you've got internal problems, all those types of things that happen. You have other areas where people are maybe hacking into from a, a warfare point of view. I know it sounds far fetched, but this is where people are absolutely hitting technology for advantages. And we have to close off not just the simple ones, but the actual end-to-end -end ones. And that's where we become prominent within what we can do with cyber. And one of the things that we really want to highlight as well is, I know data protection isn't something that a lot of people want to talk about, but what we are seeing in the marketplace today is, is that we are actually getting a lot of people have been pushed out of their backup technologies or ha ha have no access to it or don't even realize that they're infected inside it because the intelligence is not there for them to understand. I mean, people don't even verify their backups anymore. So how are they going to know whether it's actually infected or not or how long the attack's been going on? Most attacks have been going on for somewhere in the region of 200 days. So there's a good possibility that any strategy they had around backup, whether it's off-site in a tape or not, is probably infected. So we have to be sure on ways of how we can actually eliminate that. And the other thing that a lot of people talk about here, and this is really important too, disaster recovery is not cyber recovery. Just because you've got a, an offsite copy doesn't necessarily mean that that copy is good, whether it's a tape or not. Or more importantly, can I actually read the information that's offsite because I'm infected in the first place? Now you're starting to talk about things like bare metal recovery and all those types of things. So what we have to do is we have to look at this in two ways. If somebody's got a disaster recovery strategy, can we enhance that? Can we make it better? Can we add cyber resilience to that? Well, the answer from our point of view, from Dell EMC, is yes. 
And we do that in a unique way, which I'll sort of highlight very quickly to you going forward. But when we're talking about layers of protection, we have to understand that when we're making copies of information, we have to make sure that things like encryption and flight, encryption at rest, role-based control, all of those things are taken into consideration when we're thinking about layers of protection and how they become part of a resilient strategy. And when we're moving forward in that particular resilience area, we've also got to think about compliance. We've got to think about what an air gap really is, okay? And I know that sounds simple, but we're not just talking about somebody that's took something offline here. We've got to talk about complete security around the access. More importantly, if we're creating a vault for air gap copies, we want to be able to analyze what's in there. And we want to be able to understand at an application level what needs to be in there. Not all data needs to have a cyber resilience against it. Mission critical, yes. So we have ways of being able to modify that and only send the data from the disaster recovery copy into the cyber vault that is business critical. What does that mean? We get the best value we can when we're talking about cyber resilience. And yet, of course, how do we do this? We have to be able to analyze it, right? So we have an extension that basically splits us into two. If we're talking about an air-gapped resilience, then we built that in, FOC, into our new PowerProtect and indeed into our new OS for DD. So we have air gap that we don't charge for. So if you're talking to a customer about disaster recovery, talk to them about how we can add that air gap security in to the actual strategy free of charge. Then we can extend onto that the cyber sense, the analytics that allows us to pick and choose what we analyze from a data point of view to make sure that there is no attack inside that data that's already been replicated. And we can do that over a daily pass, a weekly pass, monthly pass, whatever it is. And we actually pull that data out of the repository and take it into a secure environment and analyze it. So let me show you what that means very quickly. When we're talking about this protection strategy, we have to understand that most people will look at a recovery the database right whether that's through snapshotting whether that's through backup or whatever other method that people choose and then they will obviously introduce a second part where they're talking about site recovery for a natural disaster or whatever it may be and that will be part of an incumbent backup solution they may well replicate that too so you might have replication at i don't know the hypervisor at storage level and at the backup level it would be great if all of those things were able to be visible from a centralized UI, right? Which we can do. But the third part is, is what happens when we lose the production sites or we lose access and we lose vision and sight of the backup? Well, then we have this ability to create this sandbox environment, this secure environment that maybe only the security officers have the ability to access, which gives us this vaulting capability, which makes sure the data that's in there is absolutely infection free and ready to recover whether that's we recover it back up into a cloud repository maybe perhaps maybe because it's the where we can bring it back into the hypervisor maybe we can fail it back whichever way the customer wants to be able to do that what we find is is we tend to see them fight, stand it up with inside a secure environment and offer it back out however we can do it that way. And when we're doing that, you've got to remember we have those technologies inside that's inbuilt there for the reduction. That means that when we're rehydrating information, we're only hydrating information that's missing in a block comparison to what we've already seen. So the efficiencies are all there, but now we have this extended bulk capability that gives us that absolute compliance and governance that says that we are cyber secure. Of course, you know, looking at that from a solution point of view, if you're selling, conclusion way, if you're selling the hardware or the convergence story, we're talking about the backup kind of environment, how we can bring that together, how we give that application secure protection, role-based control, how we can replicate that with multi-stream capability and ultimately protect that with immutable data copies through our CyberSense recovery options. So it's a really compelling story of how you can build out that opportunity from just backup into data protection where we're involved in disaster recovery, 
and adding that extra functionality of the cyber secure option with the bolt. What does it look like from a solution point of view? For you guys out there that are a bit more technical that are interested in this, you'll get a copy of this, but we do this through our M3 technology. And the M3 technology, our replication capabilities is 100% air gaps and secured and locked. Once we receive, we shut off the path. Once it's in there, depending on which M3 is selected, and we can do single, multiple, whichever way you want, from a cyber point of view, we then analyze the data. So, quick look at that. Like I said, there is some configuration ways that this can be done. Obviously, a technical slide here, but this is about how we can segregate data replication into the cyber vault based on the replication stream. And this is one of our real strengths because our replication capabilities is far superior to anybody else's stream count. So what does that mean? We can segregate without the loss of performance. We can absolutely secure that segregation in flight, at rest, everything else, and then of course, analyze it. The analytics that we do, we scan, we make sure we understand what we've seen before and whether it's changed, we're able to offer a report back on that and we can do that and ultimately if we then take it out into the vault, we can absolutely investigate it and again remove anything that may well be infected before we try and bring that. That's our cyber recovery options. From a point of view, anybody that's familiar with our products, we're now running HTML5 across all of our platforms. This is what it looks like. And we get notification in that single UI that we have a locked vault situation. We also get from the cyber reset sense point of view, the confirmation or the critical alert on the details side of it. Pause there, I'm watching the time, um, 15 minutes. So that was the cyber one please think about the cyber as an extended opportunity to speak to partners that are maybe already working with us before or a differentiation against our competing vendors on how you do that. And it is, you know, very compelling there. How do I mean by compelling? Well, we were the first, you know, to, to get certification in America around Sheltered Harbor. Sheltered Harbor is a standard organization that talks about cyber resilience. We were first. And a lot of vendors are still talking about Sheltered Harbor and how they're going to integrate into that. Then ask them if they actually achieve that today, because that's a difference. So moving on, I want to touch on cloud. Okay, and cloud is a big topic with inside Dell EMC, not just in data protection, but right across our ISG portfolio. I want to simplify our cases for you here. Basically, we have four use cases that we focus on here. Long-term retention, everybody talks about that. Disaster recovery, whether that's for people that don't have a second site or whether they have a cloud strategy for recovery. In cloud protection, as you can imagine, those applications that are already out there and the backup to cloud. Okay, now the backup to cloud doesn't necessarily mean long-term retention because we could be talking about recovery as well with inside that. What to remember, all of our products that we produce at hardware level and software level have cloud out included in them. So we are not limited in any way in a conversation about how we move data around. Remember that we have the widest protected workload ecosystem in the world today. So we can protect more applications, more databases than anybody else. As we move along. The areas that we really think where the value is, is, is you know, have that conversation around long-term retention. Remember what long-term retention looks like. Also remember that, you know, the technologies we have inside our profits really allows us to reduce the cost of that. And if it came to long-term retention recovery, because of those technologies, the amount of information we need to bring back from that long-term retention is less. And we're backing up to cloud. Remember those technologies allow us to be able to significantly improve the footprint that they need to purchase within the cloud and the bandwidth that's required to go to the cloud. And also how we bring that back where that hydration happens with cloud providers to bring that data back, we are still able to bring back only the significant blocks that are required on site to recover that information. Remember that one. And obviously from a cloud DR point of view, first and best with VMware, 
nobody can stand up more instances better than we can with inside the cloud with VMware. So whether that's in VM cloud, whether that's in uh, AWS, we have that ability to absolutely stand up or live mount, whatever way you want to call it, within the cloud around the VM infrastructure. What does that look like? Very simply, opportunity one here, long-term retention, maybe tape replacement. What's the difference between this and tape? Well, there's no management of tape going off site. There's no accountability requirements from a compliance point of view, but there is also a significantly reduced footprint. And that significantly reduced footprint is when we start talking about the cost per terabyte. And that's where we become the market leader again. Because of that footprint, we'll guarantee that cost per terabyte. Moving forward, don't forget, I talked about software defined as well as hardware capable. We have this ability to offer purpose-built appliance in the cloud, the DDVE. The DDVE is currently at 96 terabytes of usable storage. When we have the DDUP against that, we're talking about somewhere in the region of anywhere up to easily um, over a, a petabyte, quite easily. But, you know, we're talking about not the storage vault of a petabyte, or what we're talking about is the retention strategy of a customer. So we have that ability to offer those stra them, them strategies around their retention policies based on what they need. And of course, that's that software defined. On top of that, then we start talking at the legal end, the legislation that we have in different countries. We're able to obviously comply with certain areas that need to be as a government cloud, things like that. So we have those benefits based around first and best, legacy, whatever way you want to look at this, technologies that we continuously keep improving. Of course, cost comes into that. Why? Well, if we drive the cost correctly and we don't have to discount all the time, then it makes it much more profitable for the partner to actually partner with us. And what do I mean by that? We can reduce that cost of in-cloud against other vendors. We can also offer traditional on-premise capabilities that are active as the cloud. When we're talking about the on-premise, we're also able to match costs within that cloud, including the operational recovery, where that's an extra payment that's required from the cloud provider. So, you know, there's a great conversation we have here. When we're talking about that guarantee, we're talking about how we have functionality guarantee, how we have performance guarantee, but more importantly, how we guarantee the commercials as we manage the data. Um, the same happens when we're replicating. Don't forget, we're not talking about a single replication here. We're talking about edge into the data center, from the data center into the cloud, into a multi-cloud strategy. You know, a simple way for us to be able to talk about that is, is many to one or many to many. Whichever way the customer wants to move, all of that information that we move about will be in that deduplicated, compressed, and encrypted format. So that flexibility that we offer there and that multi-cloud strategy that we have within inside our ISG portfolio really comes into benefit here when we're talking about the actual strategies that people need around data protection. And, you know, I talked about this very briefly about this recover to cloud option. What I'm talking about here is, is this ability to stand information up with inside the cloud without having to fail it back, without having to have an enormous amount of hardware with inside that cloud, which we see other vendors do, where they talk about how many virtual servers they need and that. A lot of our technologies, when we're looking at VM type of data that's with inside the cloud, is built about virtual proxies that are really, really light that are really, really low on resource, which again adds to that value on that cost per terabyte when we go into the whole conversation. So the technologies are there, the ability to be able to do more different applications than anybody else within cloud on-premise is, is a gimme to us on that side, but guarantee that we're able to offer our partners and customers around cost management is key through the analytics that we can see at DPC level, moving into a, a guarantee through our storage loyalty program at commercial level. Remember, like I said, regardless of where or how the data is stored with inside what repository that might be, we have a clear modern access understanding from a single UI, which of course is role-based control. 
which of course is also capable of offering reporting metrics, search capabilities, and everything else that you'd expect from inside a modern UI. So that was our cloud strategy a little bit. I just want to show you what that means to you. I'm looking at the clock here. We're doing okay for time. I want to give you a comparison here. Now, I don't normally put vendors' names up here, but this was a slide that was made with inside our organization. And this is a true understanding of what 100 terabytes looks like for 30 days. Now, you might say to me that 100 terabytes is a lot of information, Chris, but we're talking about 30 days retention here. What we could actually really be talking about there is two and a half to three terabytes a day of data. So I want you to understand that when we're talking about how we look at costs, we're really significantly different and better at not just reducing the costs of buying the cloud consumption hardware with inside that particular provider, in this case, it's AWS, but the amount that we use, you know, the instances of compute, all those types of things are dramatically reduced because of our capabilities and efficiencies. What it equates to is very simple. You know, we have an ability to be able to look at costs and to look at the efficiencies of hardware. Combining those two together, we are able to come forward with guarantees. So on that particular subject, I'm just going to go through an instance here of one of our products. And this is the, the DP4400. Now, if you're not familiar with that product, this is our converged entry level IDPA that scales from eight terabytes to 96 with inside a 2U hardware footprint, and then offers another 2X of cloud tiering capability to help manage maybe disaster recovery or long-term retention. And that scales in the smaller area in instances of four terabytes up to 24, and then from 24, it goes to 12 terabyte increments inside the, the hardware. And from a cloud tiering point of view, it goes up in terabytes. So you can buy them in instances of one. But what I wanted to show you is, is the traditional model that we're fighting here. And this is where our partners can really, really make a, a margin that is absolutely acceptable to them from a business. So providers on here, and these prices that we have here are based on 50% lists. They are three year solutions, including service. And the one that everybody always highlights is, is this Veeam, where we use Dell hardware, right? We sell a lot of hardware storage arrays to Veeam partners. And you know, the simple modeling from a CapEx point of view, you can see why the cost difference. Technical people come along and they talk about the dedupe ratio, right? Dedupe ratios are important for all the things I've mentioned, transport, footprints, everything else. But the deduplication ratio really sparks an argument of, we don't think you get that. And these are true manufacturer numbers here, straight off their own website. And you can see I've put 50 to one on ours and you're thinking, we can't do 50 to one. The technical guy will argue this. But what really happens in the sales organization is this. They want special pricing. Special pricing happens way too frequently. That drains everybody's margin. Your margin, the partner's margin, our margin. Because what we're going to do is discount down. And if we discount down, even if they put the same margin on, the actual amount of money that they make is not going to be the same as it was before they actually discounted. So why are we discounting? We're discounting because we're having the wrong conversation. So I want to show you how a new modern sales place should be addressed for a customer that's looking on the best value to manage his data. Here's two products that I've highlighted. I've highlighted the Commvault Hyperscaler and I've highlighted the Veeam and the Storage Attack one here. And what I've done is, is I've broke down the cost over three years. And the way I've done that is, is I've basically divided 36 months, which is three years, into a monthly cost. At this point here, now we can offer finance. Finance gives us an extra margin to the partner, and it also allows the end user to pay on the monthly on what they consume in an agreed cost metric. So we can finance this. Then if we break that down by the terabytes, in this example, I've got a 24 terabyte IDPA, and I've got 24 terabytes of Veeam software and Dell hardware, and I've got 29 terabytes of the Hyperscaler because that was their smallest offering at the time. The interesting thing here is, is until we start looking at our technology, we're always working out really expensive. We're much more than our competitors in that CapEx model. But when we offer 
our capabilities at a technology level and understand the applications and the workloads and the retention strategy, what we can actually see here is a massive change on a cost per terabyte that the customer pays for as he uses. And we go instantly from being almost twice as expensive as the lean solution to being eight times more efficient in a cost per terabyte per month. When we break that down into a gigabyte cost, what we're talking about here is how we address this to our partners through our loyalty program. How we give that deduplication guarantee, how we give a three year satisfaction guarantee, how we absolutely give them a hardware investment protection, putting in the whole of the end to end solution build. That's when we become different. That's when our vendors in competition, where Beam are partnering with external, where Commvault are partnering with another hardware manufacturer, they can't offer that same end-to-end -end value. And more importantly, they can't guarantee it. So when we're addressing this price per gigabyte, we now are seven times more efficient than Commvault, more efficient than the Veeam solution. So are you skeptical out there? So let me just break this up again for you. What if I don't get those deduplication ratios, Chris? Well, even at 15 to one, and by the way, we'll give you case studies to any partner, to any customer that shows real life environments, even at 15 to one, we're still half the price of Veeam. Key one here is, is where the partners are frightened and they're thinking about cloud first because it's the cheapest, everybody says it's a penny a gig. A penny a gig show from AWS or other cloud is only to send data. We know there's another cost on to bring it back, but we can come in at less than that penny a gig in the cloud on premise with operational instant recovery included in the price. So what they do to store, we can do to recover for a tenth of the cost here. What we're really talking about at the 55 to one is less than a penny or a cent a gig. So when the, customer, when the partner's looking for margin, even if he puts that less than a cent a gig or 10% of it and makes it 50% of it, he's still half the cost of Amazon with on-site operational instant recovery built into that cost too. So if you've got service providers out there, that's the one there that will absolutely get them on board. And remember the customer's only paying for what he's using at the time. So have a look at what we have from a material point of view. Look at the guarantees that we're offering out there. Speak to Marius about all the programs that he's running to go out to the partners and talk to them about why we're first and best. But the technology's always been there. Now the solutions just need to be positioned correctly, but the conversation needs to transform. So at that point, I'm smack on two o'clock here, Carl. I'm pretty proud of myself there. Does anyone have any questions? I haven't seen any questions in the questions and answers box. Uh, and yes, congratulations, just in time. That was very, very good. I'm here if anybody needs to reach out to me. Carl, you're more than welcome to give mine and Marius's email out if they've got any further questions and I'm happy to follow up. Okay, good. Uh, thank you very much, Chris. Thank you very much, Mario. You're welcome. Uh, thank you very much for everybody joining this. As we said before, uh, we are here.